In this presentation, I'm going to take a look at strong and irregular verbs in German. I'm going to begin the presentation with a review of the weak verb conjugation form. You'll recall that we use a three-step program or pattern to conjugate weak verbs. From there, I'm going to take a look at strong verbs and see that they essentially follow the pattern that we've established in steps one and two, but very dramatically uh, in the third step. From there, I want to have a historical uh, side trip to Old English to show you that um, the same pattern of strong verb conjugation also existed in English, but um, historically, uh, several, several hundred years ago, uh, and that we no longer have that similar pattern today. From there, I want to conclude the presentation with a review of irregular verbs. Uh, we'll see that irregular verbs are similar to the strong verbs in that they change generally in the second and third, con uh, second and third person singular. However, they also uh, vary dramatically in other ways. Therefore, uh, they actually manifest some characteristics of weak verbs, but and also of strong verbs, and therefore they're going to be called irregular. Um, so, what we have on our screen, uh, the verb spielen, to play, is a basic uh, German regular or weak verb. The first step shows the infinitive verb form spielen. This is what you would see in a dictionary. Now, to conjugate the verb, we simply, as we see in step two, remove the infinitive ending to reveal the, uh, the verb stem. Now in the third step, we take that verb stem and we tack on the appropriate verb ending based on the subject of the verb. So we have, for instance, in the first person singular, ich spiele, second person, du spielst, third person, er spielt. In the plural, we have in the first person, wir spielen, second person, ihr spielt, third person, sie spielen. Now, uh, strong verb conjugation is essentially the same in the first and second steps. We have the infinitive verb form of fahren, or to drive, and in the second step we take that infinitive form and remove the infinitive ending en. This leaves us with the verb stem fahren. Now, in the third step, things change slightly. Uh, we still tack on the appropriate endings. Um, however, you'll notice that in the second and third person, there's a change in the quality of the verb stem. So in the first person singular, ich fahre, and all the plurals, uh, fahren, fahrt, and fahren, we have the A that uh, is the same. However, in the second and third person singular, there's a change in the quality of the, of, the, of the vowel and the verb stem. So A goes to A umlaut. Du fährst, er fährt. Now, this change in the second and third person singular is something that other Germanic languages also manifest. So for instance, Old English. We have the infinitive builden to command. That would be analogous, I assume, to the, uh, I suppose, to the uh, modern German ich bitten, ich, uh, or the modern, Germ uh, the modern German verb bitten, ich bitte. So the first person singular ich builden, and the second person singular goes to du bietst. And in the third person you go, he beat. So we have a we have a similar change in the quality of the verb stem. EO goes to IE in the second and third person singular. Now this change in the vowel of the verb stem, uh, certain patterns of strong verb conjugation manifest this change. Now, there are seven complete patterns in German of strong verb conjugation, and it's actually patterns five, six, and seven that manifest this change. So, in pattern five, we have lesen, uh, to read, 
Ich lese, du liest, er liest, wir lesen. So, I goes to I, E. In six, we have essen, to eat. Ich esse, du isst, er isst, wir essen. And number seven, schlafen, E goes to E, umlaut, like we've seen in fahren. Ich schlafe, du schläfst, er schläft, wir schlafen. Now, patterns one through four don't change in the present tense, but change in the past tense, and we'll get to that in another lesson. Now, these seven patterns are don't have any rhyme or reason to it. There's no reason why a certain verb fits into a certain conjugation pattern. Now, that being said, once you've memorized these seven patterns, any of the hundreds of strong verbs that you will encounter will fit into one of those seven patterns. So it simply becomes a question of developing a feel for um, for the uh, for which pattern that which pattern that you will use. So, for instance, s six the six pattern. Ich esse, du isst. Uh, fressen, fressen, friss. Uh, it simply becomes uh, second nature, a reflex. Uh, you know the strong verb, and then based on your feel for the language, you can plug it into the appropriate strong verb conjugation pattern. Therefore, it's important to memorize those strong verbs. Now, let's take a look at irregular verbs. Now, irregular verbs, for, for instance, haben, to have, um, manifests the same change in the second and third person singular. Something's different. However, you'll see here that it's not, it's not a it's not a question of the quality of the verb stem. A is still an A. However, uh, the, there is other general weirdness that takes place in the second and third person singular. Here, it's a re, uh, the verb stem isn't complete. The B is removed. So, ich habe, du hast, er hat. This is something that simply has to be memorized. And again, with werden, or to become, Ich werde, du wirst, er wird. Now, we have a change in the quality of the verb, uh, of the, of the quality of the vowel in the verb stem. E goes to I. So that's similar to what we've seen in the strong verbs. However, in the second person singular, we remove a D completely from the, from the, uh, uh, the, the verb, uh, from the, uh, the verb stem. And then we replace it in the third person. So it's just a pattern that's unusual that can't be neatly subsumed under any of the other patterns. Therefore, it's irregular. Note, however, that it's generally in the second and third person singular, with, of course, the exception of the verb wissen, to know. Whereas in, in, with this verb, we have uh, in the singular for second and third, a completely different quality of vowel. And in the plural, it, resume, it, it reverts back to the normal I. So, ich weiß, du weißt, er weiß, wir wissen, ihr wisst, sie wissen. So, to summarize, irregular verbs uh, generally manifest a change in the second and third person singular. Uh, these changes are erratic, unpredictable, irregular, therefore they simply have to be memorized. Now, strong verbs can be classified according to seven patterns. Three of the seven patterns manifest a change in the quality of the vowel and the verb stem in the present tense. So, ich fahre, du fährst. Ich esse, du isst. Ich lese, du liest. Uh, these patterns of conjugation simply have to be memorized. Once, they mem once you have them memorized, they will greatly 